Sally was growing up, becoming a woman, preparing to go off to college. Her mother had struggled to provide for her education, an especially difficult task since her father had died several years earlier. Her mother made every effort within her power to raise Sally right. Now, she would be on her own. An exciting and frightening time. Sally had strong reservations about leaving her mother alone to mind the farm and the chores associated with it. She was also nervous about having to find her own way without her mother's guidance. And so as she prepared to meet the bus, her bags were packed and ready, and her mother came to her and took her arm and said to her, you're gonna see things and do things you ain't never heard of, and you won't know which way to turn sometimes. You remember how you used to tug on my apron strings when you wanted something, and I'd see to what you was after. You remember how when you was too close to the road, and I'd holler to you to tell you to get away from there. Her mother, her mother you reminded her of all of these things very gently. And then she said, well, I'm going to be there with you in your heart. But it'll be up to you to listen to what I told you. I can't kiss your hurts when you fall down and skin your knee or quiet you when the big storms come rolling through. But I'll be as close as a peanut in your pocket when you need me. If you're afraid, I'll stand with you. And if you are hurting, you can feel me close. And if you do wrong, I'll whisper the truth so that you won't do it no more. Well, the tears came to both the mother and the daughter. And her mother opened the dresser, dresser drawer and took out a beautifully folded handkerchief and placed it in the pocket of Sally's dress. And upon leaving, Sally felt completely alone. And so as she fought back the tears, she reached into her pocket to pull out that handkerchief that her mother had placed there. And then she noticed that there was a knot in one corner, just like her mother used to tie her milk money in her handkerchief. Upon untying the knot, she found a single peanut. And she knew that her dear mother would always be with her in her heart. This story kind of helped me with something I was puzzling over that Jesus said in the gospel this morning. He said this, if you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. You know, when I think about the people whom I love in my life, I think of how much I enjoy being with them. Isn't it true? They're the people we want to be around all the time. The people we love are the ones we miss the most when they can't be with us, whether it be because of distance separating us or schedules or death that has a permanently separated physical sense from us. So when Jesus says, if you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, I found myself thinking, why would I rejoice if the person I loved was leaving me? It seems like something of a contradiction, but that misses the whole understanding of Jesus as human and divine. Because the fact is, Jesus, as the only begotten Son of God, possesses divine glory for all eternity. But while he is on earth, 
This glory is veiled. It is hidden behind his holy human nature. It only shows itself on a few occasions, like the miracles that he performed or at the transfiguration. But now, through his death, resurrection, and ascension into heaven, Jesus will be glorified in his body also as he returns to the Father and enters into his glory. So this is why his leaving this world should be a source of joy for his disciples and for all of us. You see, it is not about his physical separation from us, but rather it's about the unique spiritual union that we have for all eternity. Also, it's sort of a backhanded way of describing the greatness of the resurrection and the ascension. You know, it's hard for us to comprehend that when Jesus rose from the dead, his resurrected body is an indication to us of what our bodies think for all of human nature to rejoice in. Since the human body of Jesus is glorified, so too can our bodies be glorified. So the point is, if we really love Jesus, we would rejoice at his going to the Father because his glory is something that we all hope to share in. So it's not about the loss of his physical presence, but the gain of a deeper spiritual presence. The fact is, God still loves us as much as he always has. He still longs to hold us close and be there for us. But he also knows what is best for us. He knows that we are always in need of a new phase in our spiritual growth, just as Sally experienced in her separation with her mother. So the good news is that God wants to dwell in our lives. God wants to take up his residence in our hearts. God wants to be with us always, as close as a peanut in our pocket. So it's time for us to realize that faith is not a feeling. It's a commitment. It's a surrender of ourselves to God. It's saying yes to God, even though we don't sense or feel his presence. It's like Sally, who was reminded by the peanut in her pocket that her dear mother would always be with her in her heart. The reality is that the further God seems to be away from us, the deeper we need to delve into our hearts so as to realize the greatness of his glory ever present in us and ever ready to blossom in our lives.